Hi there, it's Marilda. One out of four working moms is struggling with burnout. 2020, in the United States only, 10 million women are suffering from burnout. Can you imagine the numbers worldwide? Welcome to The Princess Left the Tower. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any interesting facts about women. But now, let's dig in. What is burnout? It's not just feeling blue or stressed. It's not just uh, working long hours and um, doing multiple tasks every day. But it's that overwhelming feeling that you have when you are not in control of your time. And it happens when you are forced to complete tasks repeatedly, day in, day out, and these tasks clash with your identity or your idea of how things should work and don't match your aspiration and values. This feeling causes depression, cynicism, apathy, negativity and reduced professional productivity. These are the official symptoms of burnout. Burnout is an emotional, physical and spiritual exhaustion caused by a chronic stress. Usually it starts uh, in the working environment and then extends to other areas of your life and personal relationship. At an emotional and uh, spiritual level, when you work hard but your work does not match your aspiration or when you never take a break, a break sorry, to uh, listen to yourself, then your vital energy slowly dies down and your body sends you warning messages, headache, gastrointestinal problems, cravings for food, uh, sweets or junk food or alcohol, or in the most extreme cases, even drugs. And why burnout is mostly women? Because women are still the main player when it comes to childcare and uh, housework. Despite the fact that we work full time and we play important roles in corporate companies. In the work environment, women are more exposed to uh, pressure and stress than their male colleagues. Gender discrimination, gender pay gap, uh, lack of promotion, lack of support for motherhood and sexual harassment. At home, we have to perform different tasks on a daily basis, laundry, cooking and mumming. So the house is a source of um, unpaid and extra stressful sorry, work. So a home is, not, is no longer a place for recovery, pampering, healing. All these stress factors generate massive pressure on women and expose them to burnout more than men. And that is a fact. Now, let's have a closer look at the signs of burnout. So, we said that burnout is not just stress. Um, stress is short-lived and related to a specific aspect of our lives. Usually, it is temporary and not very harmful. But if that stress lasts for a long time, months or even years, and if you are experiencing a feeling of emptiness, apathy, lack of energy and enthusiasm, then it's turning into burnout. And soon you will also experience mental and physical exhaustion, irritability, apathy, and this deep feeling of being fed up about your job. A burnout is progressive. You first experience one of two symptoms and then you add another one, another one, another one. So it is important that you ask yourself these questions to understand if you are affected by burnout. Am I exhausted every day, both physically and emotionally? Do I have the energy to face my days? Do I sleep well? Do I worry excessively about anything? 
Am I often nervous and talk harshly to colleagues, partner or even children? Am I sad or hopeless for no apparent reason? Am I cynical? Do the things I used to enjoy now no longer interest me as much as before? Do I have negative thoughts? Do I feel that all this hard work is leading nowhere? If your answer is yes to these questions, then you need to stop and think and ask for help because you are in danger. How can you deal with burnout? Awareness is the first step. The sooner you identify it and make appropriate decisions, the better. The second step is to get support. You need someone who can help you to understand what you are doing and who can give you another perspective on what you are doing. Perhaps a friend, a family member, a therapist or a coach. This dialogue is essential because once burnout affected your mindset, your mm, the decision-making process is confused and self-destructive. With support, you can identify your priorities and understand what is imposed and you don't like it. And then you can start making changes. For instance, you can delegate tasks or turn down projects, etc. The next step is to make your emotional and physical well-being a priority. I know it's the usual old advice, but it is essential here. Healthy eating, exercise, sleep, and above all, uh, define a positive daily routine. What is that? It means um, having time for lunch, making time for lunch, stop working at a reasonable time, taking leaves even if you cannot go on holiday, and above all it means stop multitasking. I invite you to watch this video which will explain why multitasking is so dangerous and is far less productive than you think. The last step is to analyze your work environment. This here is where everything starts. The concept of overwork is quite common in our corporate culture. We have to do more with less. This is repeated like a mantra everywhere. Are you familiar with that? This is not sustainable and you need to know it. Uh, workplace burnout leads employees to experience um, physical and emotional exhaustion, anxiety, lack of interest, lack of creativity, lack of commitment, and eventually low productivity. And those are all reasons why people are laid off. So from the workplace, the burnout extends its effect on personal behavior, and eventually it's the family, the community, the society. So that's why it's very important that you analyze your job and work environment in the first place and take proper actions. Now, add parenting to the workplace burnout and you get an explosive cocktail. Parenting is amazing, is a source of immense joy and we all agree on that. But it is also extremely challenging and you know that. When your kids are born, you have new responsibilities. Very often you have to do that on yourself um, without any external support. And nobody really prepares you. So all of a sudden you are thrown into these complicated situations and uh, you're feeling vulnerable and fragile and secretly you also think that you have failed as a mother, or am I wrong? So you are overwhelmed and work and you feel guilty because you cannot take care of kids as you want. Um, because when you finally get time for them, you cannot get a good connection because you are already tired and drained, right? Now, add the pandemic to this scenario and 
boom, you are officially burnout. Daycare centers and school are closed. You are forced to work regular working hours every day and you have to take care of kids and homeschooling them. So as you see, burnout and mom guilt are linked and this is a scary roller coaster ride for working mothers today. And you cannot really underestimate this assault. So what should you do? Just quit your job because you are burnout? out? Hundreds of thousands of women left their job in 2020 at a record rate because juggling career and family at this level is no longer possible. However, that's not a good option, maybe, because it will increase the gap between men and women and will create an even more unbalanced society. Women should not quit, should not give up on their active role in the world's economic life, but they should change mentality and enter this scenario in a smarter way. What if you could ask for a part-time job or look for a part-time job, reinvent the old family routine and dedicate yourself to reinventing your new career? Learning new skills and building your knowledge. Reinventing yourself means thinking outside the boxes, okay? And look for new opportunities in the digital economy. It is clear to everyone that that is the future and it offers tremendous opportunities. But you have to prepare yourself properly. You cannot just quit your job and launch your online business and then hope that things will fall back into place. It does work this way. You need a plan, a strategy, you, lean, you need to learn new skills and you can do it if you access clear instruction and you can rely on mentoring. Another thing that will help you massively is to engage with other mompreneurs and empowering communities to have ideas and not to feel lost or lonely. So be part of a community that can support you and then work on your new career. Launch your online business. This way you can get the flexibility and the freedom you need. If you want to learn more, uh, down below in the description of this video, you will find a link. Click on that link to get uh, free workshops. They will give you loads of ideas and information. So, Change the game and keep the burnout far away from you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Ciao!